It's going to be a very interesting lecture. Kindly have your tea fast and please do come here. Miss Dr. Naswami to kindly come to the dais, please. Kalimamani, Dr. R. Nagaswami. He obtained master's degree in Sanskrit language and literature and PhD in Indian arts. His fields of specialization are art, archaeology, architecture, literature, epigraphy, paleography, numismatics, temple rituals, and philosophy, ancient law and society, music, dance, and South Asian arts. He served as first director of archaeology of the state and held the post till retirement, that is from 1966 to 88. He was responsible for protecting several historical monuments like Chera inscriptions at Pugalur, the palace site of the Imperial Cholas at Gangakonda Cholipuram, Tirumalai Nayaka Palace at Madurai, Danish Fort at Trankweba, the birthplace of Subramanya Bharati at Etepuram, besides excavating the palace sites of Veera Pandya Kattabamban at Pandalam Kurchi. It was Dr. Nagasami who started and founded the new, now world famous Chidambaram Natyanjali festival 24 years ago with Kapila Vatsayana and continues to serve as its founder secretary. He has organized several seminars including the International Conference on Arts and Religion at Chidambaram in 2001. He has published more than 120 books including monographs, texts of inscriptions, translations and guides in Tamil and English. He has been honored with Kalai Mamani Award by Government of Tamil Nadu. A keen researcher and internationally acknowledged art historian and scholar, he has published several books including Masterpieces of South Indian Bronzes, Shiva Bhakti, Tantric Cult in, Ta in Tamil Nadu, Uttarar Merur in French with Dr. Francois Gross in 1970 and Faces of South Indian Art and Architecture. May I now invite him to speak on Kailashanathan Temple of Kanchipuram. Friends, I am extremely thankful for this very valuable opportunity to, to speak to you about one of the greatest temples of India in the field of architecture, sculpture, paintings, inscription, religious history, and historical events and what not. And one of the greatest artistic uh, construction. And before I start my talk, I want to tell you, when this temple was built around 700 AD, and the king came out and looked at it, like the artist of Ellora, he said, what a great temple it is. Wonderful temple. Shiva resides in Kailasa and sports, but this temple, built of stone, surpasses the sports of Shiva and the Kailasa. He was wonderstruck to see his own creation. So he called it, this has come as a manifestation of my own fame. And he called himself Shiva Chudamani, a great Bhakta. And that he has inscribed in the same temple, his reflection on this particular temple as Saile Kailasa Leelam Apaharati Grihe Raja Simheswarakhe. You see, he says, this is Raja Simheswara. Built Surpassing the beauty of sports of Shiva in Kailasa. Saile Kailasa Leelam Apaharati Grihe Raja Simheswarakhe Vibratya Brahmlihagre Virachaitu Sada Sannidhanam Vrishankaha. This is the inscription he has written 
on the base of the temple. So that is the base with which we start the study of this great temple, wonderful temple. Friends, I wanted to speak to you in three or four parts about this temple. The personality whom I told you is the Raja Simha Pallava who ruled between somewhere around 690 and 728. And this temple came around 700 AD. It's built entirely of stone and uh, it, as he mentioned that it reflects his personality. Because he came in the descendant of the Pallavas, whom he says, <coughs> Brahmanyana. The, the kings call themselves as Brahmanyas in ancient times. Satyavacha, the rulers should be speakers of truth. And that he mentions Satyavacha and Vritya Seva Parana, adoring, respecting the Vridhas, the ancient, their own ancestors. Vritya Seva Parana. Then he goes on to say, at the end he says, Naya Vinaya Vata Pallavanam Kulana. Well learned, but at the same time humble. The kings, the Chakravartis, they are humble, Pallavas. Tesham Vamse Prasuta. He was born in that family of the Pallavas. The Pallavas belonged to Bharadvaja Gotra. And in that family, he was born of the Pallava king Parameshwara. His father's name is Parameshwara. Just as Parameshwara gave birth to Kumara, Guha, this king, who is called originally is uh, Nama, Narasimha. But he was born of the Parameshwara who conquered Rana Rasikapura, the Chalukyan country. And the Parameshwara's son, just as Parameshwara's son, he was born as Guhaiva Paramat Ishwarat Atajanma. Just as Guha was born of Parameshwara, this king was also born of Parameshwara as Kumara Guha. Now there are many important things that he gives himself, but I won't be able to give you all that. But two or three important events that are mentioned, and also his whole names and aspirations which are reflected in 300 and nearly 50 titles are inscribed all along this great temple. This is the temple called the Raja Sameshwara temple and nearly 350 50 titles are there. And some of the titles are very important. One, he was a great lover of art. Great lover of art. Kala Samudraha is one of the titles. Then he was a great musician. Uh, there is a beautiful verse in Mahabalipuram which says, Yadina Vidhata Bharato Naharir Narado Navas Kandaha Bodhum Kaiva Samartaha Sangeetam Raja Rajasya. 
His Sangeeta, Sangeeta is used in ancient times to represent both music and dance. And in music, instrumental music and vocal music. So he was an expert in Sangeeta, which means he was an expert in instrumental music, vocal music and also dance. And he says if he is not Hari, if he is not Brahma, if he is not Bharata, if he is not Narada, who can appreciate and understand the greatness of achievement in the field of music and dance by this great king? So this is the earliest reference to Bharata's by name in inscription, which shows that he was a master of music and dance. And one of the titles, which also says that he was Veena Naradaha. He was capable of playing on Veena, music, Veena Naradaha. Atodya Tumburuhu. He was an uh, uh, expert in Atodya, percussion instruments, Vadya, and then Sangeeta. So, it is necessary to understand that the ethos of Bharata's Natya Sastra, which he a master, is reflected in the sculptures and paintings he has portrayed in this film. Such a great king, he says, <coughs> well, he had, uh, I am going to show you, yeah, there are so one small temple at the front, extreme front. There are altogether six small temples in front. There is one temple which was built by his queen, one of the queens. Her name is called Ranga Pataka. Obviously, Ranga represents a dance theatre. Ranga Pataka. She was as if a flag. Beautiful flag, Ramyam Rangapatakaya, beautiful flag. And uh, she built the temple. She has left an inscription there, very interesting inscription. What she says is, Deve Jagadvalaya Rakshana Baddha Dikshe. He is emperor, Deva. He has taken a vow to protect this whole world. Jagad Dvalaya Rakshana Baddha Dikshe. Then, Vallabhyam Urjitam. This great conqueror, who was something like Narasimha Vishnu, known for his valor, if that uh, Ranga Pataka looks at what? She says, what should I do? She had such an influence on that emperor, whatever she said, she was ready to obey immediately. And by that, she uh, uh, conquered him by her beauty and her guna. And also, she says in her inscription, you know, Lakshmi, is on his heart and she thinks that she is more controlling him. But you see, now he controls the world, I control him. Vallabhyam urjitam avapya virajateya nirjitya garvam eva pushkara devataya. Even Lakshmi, Garva has been subdued by this. So even such a great emperor, he obeyed his queen and the queen controlled him. So such a lovely personal uh, qualities are reflected in all these 350 inscriptions. As one, another important inscription, which says, Dushyanta Prabhutai 
श्रुता अंबर गता वाणी शरीरम विना दिस इज एन इंस्क्रिप्शन फाउंड ऑन दिस टेंपल अबाउट दिस आई विल बी टेलिंग यू एंड बिफोर दैट आई विल से दैट एट द बैक वन व्हाट यू सी इज द मेन टावर व्हिच वी बिल्ट अलोंग विद द एनक्लोजर एंड देन यू हैव अ स्मॉल वाइट टेंपल देयर इन फ्रंट and then the smallest temple in the front so you have three temples one at the back the second in the middle and the third one you see in the front the last one at the back taller one was built by rajasimha known as rajasimheshwara the second one in front was built by his son mahendra varma that is his son's temple erected by his son this one by his wife so it is almost a sort of a family temple entire family built this whole group of temple which is very rare one temple with all its secondary temples all built by not only the king he has also made his son to build a temple he has also made his queens to build temples all in one so <coughs> here the inscription says he tried to create in this world the very krita yuga krita yugam aparam nirmimanu mahendram he tried to create the greatest utopian uh, <coughs> world in this in this world krita yugam aparam nirmimanu mahendram such king says shakti hi shunnari varga vihita parayama he says he is an expert in vidita saiva siddhanta marge he is expert in saiva siddhanta and this is the earliest epigraphical reference in tamil nadu to saiva siddhanta and a king who mastered it and not only that but also uh, so many branches of saiva siddhanta there is not one saiva siddhanta there is not one saiva there are so many uh, type of uh, branches in Sid- saiva he mastered all those branches vidita bahunaya saiva siddhanta marge shriman adyant kamaha he had endless varieties of desires to be fulfilled atyant kamaha endless endless varieties atyant kamaha kshata sakala malaha in siddha saiva siddhanta impurities must be cleaned before one reaches the feet of lord shiva kshata sakala malaha this is written on the base of the at uh, the temple in pallavad grantha erect and then he says then this temple varaja simeshwar graha which is beautiful atimana atyadbhuta beautiful temple at temple now i told you there is a very important event mentioned in another inscription of him in same place dushyanta pramukaihi shruta ambaragata vani shariram vina he refers to sakuntala story and so obviously he has studied sakuntalam of kalidasa he is a master of many many subjects and so he says he is itihasa priya and uh, so he has studied uh, kalidasas uh, sakuntala and he said dushyant pramukaihi shruta ambaragata vani shariram vina kshmanataihi sura darshabihi yadi krite kanvadibihi svikritaihi tan nacharyam 
So I am going to tell you the meaning of it. I just I am telling you the Sanskrit flavor of it, which he himself has composed and written on that. He says that I heard an asariri. You know, asariri is a divine voice without sarira. So that he heard earlier. Dushyanta and other great kings who can see Kanva and the great Maharishi, they have also heard these type of sariras, asariras. But that's not a great uh, surprise because that was great uh, yuga, krita yuga. But when in this world, duri bhavat sadguni, all good kunas, good qualities go and hide themselves, in this that he has heard an asariri. This is absolutely Vismapaham Sri Bharaha. It's really great, great. What is this asarira? Here, friends, as I told you, this temple surpassed in beauty the sports of Shiva and the Kailasa. And this temple was built by Raja Simma and he fixed a date for its Kumbhavisheka. The Kumbhavisheka for this Kailasnada temple was fixed on a particular date. The previous night, Sankara, uh, Shiva, appeared in his dream and told him, my friend, I have another engagement tomorrow. I won't be able to attend your Kumbhavishega. You postpone your Kumbhavishega. <laughs> A great emperor, with all his wealth at his command, with all love for his beauty and wonderful creation that he has created, Shiva appeared and told him, you postpone your Kumbhavishaka. Then it occurred to him that one of his own subjects in a small village, far away, not far away from Madras, near Tiruvallur, he said to have built a small temple and Shiva was going to receive the Kumbhavishaka to that village. So this made him surprised and he went to that village, the Chakravarti, Eka Chakravarti, Eka Vera, he went to that village and asked the people, where is the temple who, uh, which was built by someone here in this village? They said, there is no temple built in this temple, in this village. No temple built. Yes, you are Chakravarti, no temple has been built. No, Shiva told me that a temple has been built here. Show me. Then they said, one small poor Brahmana he is telling that he is going to build a temple. And maybe we will ask him, we will go and get him. The emperor said, no, 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 you should not go, I will come. And they went, the entire village went, and they saw one poor Brahmin there, standing there. The king first saluted him, fell at his feet and asked, where is the temple you have built? Shiva came to me and told me in my dream that you have built a temple here. Where is, where is it? The Brahmin was surprised. I don't have money. I don't have resources. I don't have sculptures to build the temple. But out of my own love, affection, I was imagining I am building a temple. That temple dedicated to Shiva is built in my own mind. The king felt that all this wealth, money, power, etc. with which he built is no equal to the temple built with great devotion. And that story is mentioned in Shekhar's Puranam as one of the stories of the uh, lion mass. 
So this love, affection, devotion is greater, greater than all this power, etc. And that is what is mentioned by the king in his own inscription on the temple wall, which shows that what Sekular says is later on, as an event in the life of a Saivite saint, is a historical event. And that he records it on this uh, uh, base of the temple. Then, maybe I tell you here itself, before I go on to describe the beauty of the temp temple structure and so on. When it was built, this was the biggest temple built of stone. You know the great king who built the Tanjur temple, Brahishwara temple, the greatest, Raja Raja, has come to Kanjipuram and has seen this uh, temple nearly 300 years later. And he calls it that it is a great stone temple, Kachipe to Periya Tirukkatrali. His inscription is mentioned there. So the builder of the greatest temple calls it the great temple and that inscription is still there as you enter. This great temple has left another great impact, very important impact in the history of Indian art, Indian architecture. Now much earlier to him, his, his grandfather, Mahamalla, he invaded the Chalukya country. He went right up to Vadami, Badabi, Vadabi, Badami, and pulverized the city. Badami was destroyed to the ground. I had been to Badami. You must all go and see them all. How far these, these kings have gone from one place to another. Narasimha Varman Mahamalla the first has gone right up to Badami and he has left an inscription on the rock. You can go, I have seen it, I feel it. He has given the Saka era 642, uh, which is cor uh, corresponding to 642, when he, Mahamalla Pallava, conquered Bada, Badapi. So, after the construction of this temple, in 700, there came a great Chalukya ruler, Vikramaditya. When he was seated on the throne, and when all the great people were pouring the sacred water over his head, he says he felt through his nerves that he should take revenge on Kanchipuram. Just as Mamalla destroyed Vatapi, he must also go and destroy Kanchipuram and destroy the fame of this Pallava rulers. So with great force, with great army, he started invading the Pallava territory. At that time, he was not there. The builder Rajasimha is no more. His son was also not there. A young boy called Nandi Varman at the age of 12 was in charge of Kanchipuram. The well-trained Pallava army could not stand before the invading Chalukya Vikramaditya who was himself a young man. The only aim for them was to pulverize the city of Kanchipuram and take revenge on the Pallavas who destroyed his own capital earlier at Vatapi. So his entire commanders are coming with tremendous force. This Pallava boy, who was the then ruler crown, he could not stand, he ran away from Kanchipuram. Vikramaditya, as he entered Kanchipuram, Luckily, he came first to this temple. He saw this temple. What a beautiful temple. It was completely painted. 
like a tender flower fragrant flower whole temple was painted with beauty i am going to show you one or two paint relics of those paintings still there ah, he admired this beauty of this temple architecture of this temple along with him his queen loka mahadevi was also there he hurriedly called his commanders do not disturb any part of kanchipuram enter it without destroying it he gave the order enter without destroying any part of kanchipuram kanchipuram ad kanchim avinashayva pravishya says is one inscription as he entered this temple he asked the priest to perform special puja not like in other parts where they destroy the enemy's uh, temples but here he worshiped the temple he worshiped the god in uh, consecrated by narasimha pratavarma and asked the priest to show him the jewels that are made for decorating this uh, god and he saw the jewels and gave his own money treasure equal to that and then wrote this event the very event that he visited kanchipura he came to this temple he saw the jewels given by narasimha pottavarma after worshiping him he gave equal amount of treasure for worshiping in this temple and that historical information he himself has written in kannada language which is still found in one of the pillars in the front mandapa of this temple so you can go and feel just as you feel your vata pis uh, narasimha's inscription you can see vikramaditya's inscription here in this temple even now but maybe then she took some of the sculptures and architects from here and uh, took them to pattalakal where there is a temple called uh, virupaksha temple now but originally okamahadevi swaram built and it has two inscriptions on the pedestals steps on one side Uh, one name name of the sthapati architect is there and on the other side there is an inscription dakshina diseya sutradhari and it is conjectured by some other historian that it is one who is brought by loka mahadevi but our architecture scholars see that loka mahadevi swaram even now exists without addition without alteration even now but in a general way it looks exactly like this one so the tradition of this architecture has it is not unlikely that it has gone to the chalukya area and then it is said that later we have rattrakutas who come to occupy the chalukya region and they are said to have carved that great kailasa at ellora and so according to the art historians that this temple based the form gave the basic form to loka mahadevi swara in chalukya country at pattadakal wonderful temple you must go and see that so you cannot appreciate this or that unless you see both of them and from there go to ellora and have a look the same eye with the same way there the art is said the uh, ellora kailasa when he finished the carving it is there in the inscription that he came out and he saw what a beautiful thing what a wonderful sculpture are these my own creation no i couldn't have made this is very god who have come and carved this image that is how that kailasa sculptures are admired so this temple 
has created history not only in tamil nadu but right through in whatever form uh, it, uh, this is the one now i will give you some idea about uh, the temple <coughs> the uh, from the ground plan elevation and the distribution of the enclosure and the sculpture are all based on a fundamental philosophy in ancient times the kings who were masters chakravartis they used a ground plan called parama sai pada that is something like a graph will be drawn on the ground and there are two major layouts one is called banduka pada and another is called parama sai pada banduka pada will consist of 8 into 8 square that is 64 square on which the main temple will be laid out if it is a, a parama sai pada it will have 9 into 9 81 squares in which the temple will be erected we have measured this base of the layout this is laid out according to parama sai pada that is 8 into 8, 9 into 9 81 squares in the outer square on the ground plan you invoke the nakshatra grah tara mandala the 27 nakshatras and the grahas are all invoked in the outer squares this just squares there is no sculpture no structure on the base plan ground plan each square represents one nakshatra one grah that is one outer square then on the inner side you have 12 squares which are called dwadasa adityas that is 12 months or day five and the 12 months are uh, you know chitra vaivasi ma indian indian months so you have nakshatra grah tara mandala on the outer squares the 12 Uh, suns moving from one month to other and that is uh, there in the second and inside the third one you get this inner sanctum and that is built of two walls here and right in the center is the linga that linga is raja simheshwara the, the shiva linga established by raja simha then you have the outer wall the sharira which has got small small shrines nine shrines are there in the corners and also in the center part each side these are called anga alayas anga alayas are limbs something like limb of the sharira and there are other wall surfaces which show various manifestations of shiva and parvati the enclosure which is originally square you double it you have or in rectangle so it is a rectangular enclosure this is actually the square in the center of which the rear square in the center of which you have the main tower in the enclosure you have eight directional deities dikpalas each direction is deified as indra agni yama nirvriti varuna vayu soma isana so these eight dikpalas are there and then each square i told you 
represents what is called Pada Devata. There are nine, and that side nine, that side nine, uh, like that. There are uh, altogether eighty-one and uh, nine, 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 nine. In these padas, pada means small square. There are pada devatas. In between these padas, you have plain wall in which. Thirty-two manifestations of Parvati as Matanga Kanya, Kadamba Vanavasini, Veena Gana Vinodini, all these aspects are there around as uh, Parvati's uh, portrait and the wall, around the wall. This is the one temple in the whole of India where the Pada Devatas are also portrayed in sculptural form with their consorts. So when they do worship in the temple, they invoke the Pada Devatas along with the, the uh, Sahabharya and then they worship it. So we have Pada Devatas, you have Parvati, then we have what, called, what is called Parivara Devatas. Parivara Devatas or Ganesha, Subramanya, Devi, Saptamatas, Dvadasa Adityas. That which was made in squares in an abstract form is given in a human form here. So twelve Adityas are portrayed, Ekadasa Rudras are portrayed. So all the compliments that are mentioned in Agamek literature are given in sculptural form in this temple. Nowhere do we have in such a beautiful order, Pada Devatas, Devi, the Parivara Devatas, all in their respective positions. And then the wall is projected forward. You see, this is the outer side of the wall, and wherever you see the standing line that represents one of the padas. Now this, I told you, which is the second one built by Mahendra Varman, his son, and that has also got a small enclosure. And so you have to enter through the enclosure now here you have six little shrines and I told you the third one from here was built by Rangapataka, Ramyam Rangapataka, yeah, that one. And see you have the base and then you have the pillar that is the second Anga, then the ceiling is the third Anga third part, and then the Sikara, Sikara is part of the ceiling, then something like a neck, you see, this is called a Griva, and over that you have a small Sikara, and top of it you have a Kalasa. So there are altogether six basic forms in any temple, the base, the pillar, the ceiling, the griva, the sikara, and the kalasa. So these are called shadangas, six parts. Veda is said to be understood with the help of shadangas. So it is something like understanding the greatest divine knowledge through the physical manifestation of these six angas. And you have a garbhagraha like thing and there is a projection which is a mandapa. And inside you have the linga. And what is important in these temples of the Pallavas at the back, you have Somaskanda Murti. Shiva, Devi and um, 
this is <coughs> Durga. Durga in so many forms. Look at this. Now here you have the you can count uh, how many how many figures are there. If it is eleven, it is Ekadasa Rudra. If there are twelve, it is Dwadasa Aditya. Now here is the front portion. Look at the constructional part, architectural technical point. Bottom most stone is hard granite. Then you have two moldies, plain one and another faceted one. That's made of sandstone. And again, the other one is a, wa, wa, what you see as white one, that is black granite. So where there is weight that comes on that, they have used hard material and on other places they have used soft material for carving. That is the technique, you can see. And here is another one. The small one. Six of his queens, uh, another, another queen is mentioned as Vilasavati. I am sure Chitra is going to tell you about all those inscriptions. Uh, this is inside. This is the prakara. Look at the prakara, outer side. Little, little, little shrines projecting from the enclosure outer wall comes in and in all of them at the back wall inside there is so much kanda shiva with varguha iva paramad ishwara apta janma so he always associated himself with guha with parameshwara and that he has placed it all and in the outer one you have on this side on one side all samhara murtis on the other side, out next side, all Anugraha Murtis. In addition to the Parivara Devatas. Now then you see one projection in the center. That is exactly in the center of the Garbhagraha. One side is Vishnu and the other side is Brahma. So Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva are always together in all temples of this time. Another great thing that you find in this temple is the king's 300 and odd uh, inscriptions, uh, 300 and odd titles inscribed. One is found on the base. The second one is in a different script on the middle one. And the same one on the upper side, another different script. And on the white, white stone, you have in the Devanagari. The bottom most one is excellent calligraphy. If it is Atyanta Kama, it begins with Atyanta Kama. And this Atyanta Kama is arranged, all the 350 are arranged in alphabetical order. As early as that period, they knew how to organize the whole thing in alphabetical order. And that one is in Devanagari script. Then the second and third, one is ornate Grantha and another one ordinary Grantha. And down below, you have beautiful calligraphy, like swan, like a bird, like a peacock, like a uh, snake. No, one, this is the earliest and beautiful calligraphy creating in all the 300 uh, titles he has used it. That reflects that he was fond of variety. Hatyantakama, endless variety. Now, I will go hurriedly through, not necessary to describe, but just have a look at them, how he has conceived, 
how the form is conceived the volume is conceived or the expression is brought to for marvelous look at that little 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 one all along what a layout what a pre planning marshaling of labor and each one is he it has a sculpture in the front this is on the main wall standing and seated lines narasimha his name that he is not he doesn't he has not left it as a minor one every inch he has looked at it with with the artistic eye expression now on this upper upper stone base the inscription i told you they are there about kalidasa dushyanta pramukha and others and also he built and then he specifically says that this temple was built by raja simha and named raja simheshwara griha now look at the distribution of this culture it has a philosophy it has a meaning gradually it takes you to the saiva siddhanta that he puts it in the center as linga but that we may have to wait for another class where we can have details here here you can see the inscriptions there bottom you have the calligraphic and two other scripts and the top one you have the uh, no i am sorry look at that these small ganas represent the individual souls they are overwhelmed with joy that they have the power to support the vimana support the body of the god and they, look at the joy with which they dance eha giritanaya guha gana sahita guha and ganas they are all that look at that that is a base a very small base what we call jagati one of the most beautiful dakshina mount outstanding dakshina mount seated beneath 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 the alavriksha and then you have all the uh, other animals wild animals and so on and kalida uh, i will say chitra arpita rambam ivavataste as if shiva was seated beneath the uh, alamara as if he is painted absolutely without any shake movement and the whole thing is a marvelous one i am sorry i can't describe you here. look at that see the see the murgas jumping up to listen to shiva's teaching dakshina murti and we say sacred feet he called himself shiva pada sekara no shiva chudamani he bare shiva on his head this is the sacred feet of dakshina murti look at that gambhira na this is gambhira he brings out that okay. even the wild animal quiet quiet in front of this great master these are the sages sanaka sanandana sanat kumara sanat sujata then you have bikshatana uh, is is the second one 
Aesthetically, this is one of the most beautiful composition within that rectangle. Look at the central movement of uh, Shiva and the gap utilized for the Rishi Patni. Well, it requires a separate time. And above that, you have the dancing figure of Shiva. Look at that. How the line and volume and movement has been manipulated, bring out the beauty of it. I hear another small, Sir Guru Murthy, sir, you tell me when I have to stop. So you please go on. Now, see, just a frame, and that frame has been used with beautiful sculptures of uh, Shiva. You can stop when you feel hungry, sir. <laughs> you can stop when you feel hungry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. And inside you have another uh, eight feet sculpture. When this temple was built, these were the largest or tallest sculptures. And these are not made outside of, of one stone, but the wall was erected and the sculpture was carved on the wall itself. That was the technique. I told you that he was a master of Nakti Shastra. Here he is Kirata and Arjuna fighting. Look at the poses of the legs. How beautifully they are displayed. One is called Alida and another one is called Pratyalida in Bharata Snati Shastra. Uh, this is uh, Ravana. The force, the force with which the power is brought out by the sculptor. And these are all, remember, covered with plaster and painted. Narasimha, fighting. Every sculpture, you see the movement. You can appreciate it if you appreciate the Bharata's Natya, danced by some of our beautiful dancers, even now, each pose, the body, head, neck, leg, feet, hand poses, these are all described in Nati Shastra. See, bhava, facial bhava is most important. Bhairavi, Tripura Bhairavi, Tripura Antaka, Tripura Sundari, what not? If you want to know all that is told in the Puranas, Shiva Puranas, or even Vishnu Purana, they are all there. You can see them. It's, it's something like a visual representation. Sorry. Look at this dance. Samatta Samharaka Tandavaya. Shiva performs dance at Tandava in the evening. This is said to be what they call Garuda Plutam. A vulture sitting down and just taking off, the pose of taking off. And you see how Nandikeshwara Maddalantar. And when Shiva taught Tandava, Parvati taught Usha the Sukumara dance, Lalita dance. How she is seated, look at that. Gaurim Nivesya Kanakachita Ratna Pite Nrittam Vidhatam Abhivanchati Sula Pavano Deva Pradosha Samenu Bhajanti Sarve is one of the Pradosha Stotra. The movement, line, volume, 
and finally the face gangadhara you call akashachari as if they are flying in the air that bhava should be brought in the sculpture you have it sun and the moon brahma just 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 the leg treatment of the leg and remember these are colored painted in color kali kali odadi kanaga jalattadi kuli odadi se tirumandira vinadhara veenathin samathin veene tadavikkundar samaveda he goes on and i think friends with this i will stop here is urdhu tandava murti shiva dancing and by the side is nandikeshwara also dancing maya api smritam nrittam sandhya kaleshu nrityata shiva says in bharata natya shastra i remember the natya karanas what is called nrutta karanas 108 poses that i dance so nandikeshwara you teach it to bharata and nandikeshwara taught that 108 nrutta karanas to nandikeshwara and that is what we have as dance nrutta karanas 108 poses which is there and devi taught sukumara i told you and here you have devi uh, uh, shiva dancing urdha tarana nandikeshwara also learning it. and we have what is called abhinaya darpana one of the text very important text called in uh, ascribed to nandikeshwara so i can go on showing you i have wonderful paintings marvelous paintings i have the bhayich bhava maybe i'll show you some few uh, ah look at that i want to close it but it's not possible so beautiful <laughs> look at that kala samhara murti uh, see the agony of the kala yama and the whole body of shiva and finally he didn't destroy him with any weapon but with a little finger of his left leg just touched him he is finished the kala who threatens us this is called raudra drishti these are all vismaya take uh, i don't say so look at that paintings are very very well preserved well preserved this, this is the somaskanda murti murti and by the side is uh, see the hand line color i hope you are able to see it doctor these are all the paintings now i'll show you only small sorry Ah. This is uh, what you call the small kinnari. Look at the paintings. No, I want to show you only few. Yeah, I think there is something repeating. So. Anyway. yes anyway this goes on i am sorry uh, friends 
in the field of music, in the field of dance, in the field of sculptural quality, in the field of aesthetics of art, in the field of technique of architecture, in the field of epigraphy, inscriptions and worship. This is one of the greatest temples and I am thankful to Mr. Gurumurthy for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. With this, I close my talk. Thank you, friends. So thank you very much. Beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Sir, you have not only enjoyed the beauty but, but passed it on to us with a captivating narration of his story. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it was an outstanding lecture for a great person to give it. Let us all stand and give him a big standing ovation. At the age of 87, he is just young. And how passionately he shares his knowledge with you. It's very difficult to see a person like this. I wish him to God to give him long life. And also a lot of opportunity for us to hear more from him. I pray God that. On behalf of the Rotary Club of Coimbatore Metropolis, uh, may I request Dr. Venu Gopal to kindly honor Dr. Nagaswamy. Today what we heard is only a tip of the iceberg. Not even 10% of Kailashnatha temple was covered by you. You need one whole or two day seminar only on this particular topic. Professor, Na I mean provided Dr. Nagaswamy is able to speak for that. He will definitely have, I look forward for that opportunity again. Friends, we all move for the lunch and again real spectacular events are awaiting us. Great scholars are in the line. Dr. Deglukar, Dr. Krishnamurti, Dr. Venget Raman and Dr. Chitra Madhavan. Four more lectures are there. Everybody has excelled there in their field and definitely it's going to be a treat for us. Let's come back as early as possible. I'll give you 30 minutes time to complete your lunch and let's here be, be here by 1.45.